We want to ask that Master, you open our minds and open our hearts so that we can receive from you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want please be seated. I want to greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. I want to thank the Lord for giving us yet another opportunity to come and share the word of God with you. And I want to also thank the Reverend Professor Kefa for inviting me to come and share this pulpit with him. It is not it is not always that you find retired men being invited to share platforms. Sometimes they are seen as the old old oil. Magutamakuru Matina Garwebo. But my anomaly I want to thank the Lord for uh, the worship service. Uh, the, the young people here are vibrant. I don't know if Major Gesho, he was asked to come and lead the worship here. He would be as agile as those young men. And so you have a replacement. <laughs> and we thank God for that. I also want to thank the Lord for the Sunday school children. Um, the, the young fathers and the young mothers are, are, are quite busy in bringing in the biological growth of the church and we want to encourage them to keep up. So please uh, continue with the biological growth uh, of the church because those young ones are the ones that are going to be uh, the pillars of this church in the future. I also want to congratulate uh, the vicar and the committee, the parish council and all the Christians uh, for this wonderful undertaking that you have, uh, you have really put in your hearts and in your minds. We can see there is a lot of progress uh, in the way this sanctuary is coming to, uh, to a completion. Uh, and we hope that uh, uh, it is going to end well, or that begins well, ends well. And we hope it is going to be finished within time, and that when the grand opening shall be done, we shall not be forgotten. We want to thank the Lord for the readings that were read to us this morning. I, I would like to uh, look at uh, the verse 19 of the gospel that was read to us. Verses 19 of the gospel of Luke chapter 21. By standing firm, you will gain life. By standing firm, you will gain life. And so, I want to speak a little bit on standing firm in the midst of challenges of life that we are going through every day. How can we be able to stand firm? When we read from this verse, by standing firm, the word standing here is in the present continuous tense. You are to continue standing firm. You are not told stand firm. You are told by standing firm. So it is a continuous process. Standing firm will help us to succeed in our salvation. You have to continue standing firm in whatever calling that the Lord has called you. You have to stand firm in your salvation so that you can get life. People who are, are not 
are not firm in what they believe in. People who are not firm in the things that they do. People who are not firm in the promises that they give. They are kind of a wishy-washy people. They are not firm. And so this phrase is telling us, or this verse is telling us, to keep firm. And keeping firm brings about success. When you keep firm in whatever you are doing, you employ your energies, you employ your mind in whatever you are doing, and keep firm in the footsteps that you ought to follow, then you are going to be successful. You are going to be more than a conqueror because you have stood firm. Jesus was talking to his disciples and as his disciples were talking to each other, they looked at the temple just as we would look at this sanctuary that we are building. It is one of the sanctuaries we can envy around. It is quite a marvelous job that you have done through the help of God. Through your donations and generosity, you have made this sanctuary to be the way it is. And so the disciples who are looking at the temple and looking at the marvelous, you know, hewing of the stones and the way they were put together and the beauty of the temple as it stood before them. They even looked at the services that are given, the ceremonies that are, uh, that are carried out in the temple. And they started marveling about it, how beautiful it was. This temple was the third temple. The first temple was built by Solomon. In 586 BC, Israel was taken to Babylon to captivity. And the Babylonians destroyed the temple. And so when they were given permission to return by King Cyrus, Ezra the prophet took the leadership of rebuilding the temple. And so the temple was rebuilt a second time through that reign of Ezra as the prophet of the children of Israel. Then after that came Alexander the Great. When Alexander the Great died, there were those generals that took over from him. They were known as the Seleucides. And these generals also destroyed the temple a second time. And it was dedicated. The temple was dedicated at that time by Simon Maccabee, the one who had led the Maccabean revolt. They dedicated the temple in the ceremony that is known as the Hanukkah. As if that was not enough, the temple was destroyed even again. And King Herod helped, no, it was Governor Herod who was in Jerusalem, helped to rebuild this temple that the Jews, that these disciples were looking at. And it had taken 46 years for the temple to be restructured, restructured and to be a marvel. A building that takes 46 years is built with precision. And this precision is the one that was making the disciples to marvel at the architectural building that was before their eyes. But Jesus told them, a time is coming. A time is coming 
that every stone of this temple that you see before you and you marvel about, every stone will be pulled down and there will be no stone on top of another. Jesus was predicting the destruction of the temple almost the fourth time by Titus who came sometimes in AD 70 and destroyed that temple. And he plundered all the temple vessels and took them to Rome. And so Jesus was predicting this destruction of the temple in 70 AD. And so the disciples plus all the Jews, as they were looking at that temple, would not imagine of that temple coming down. But it had to come because God had his own way of dealing with the Jewish people. And so we find that the disciples were also told I know you are my good followers, you are my good friends, but a time is coming that you'll be persecuted, you'll be taken to jail, you'll be denied even by members of your family. And so this is going to happen, and when it happens, do not worry, because this is just the beginning. The end has not come. But he told them, after all of this is, all this happens, stand firm. He told them, standing firm, you will gain life. And as I said, if you have an idea in your mind and you want to translate that idea into action, and then you start flip-flopping. You are not following your idea. You are doing this piece of work a little bit, and then you are running away and beginning all manner of projects. You will never come to an end. You have to concentrate. If you begin a project, put all your energy, your mind, and your resources into that project so that you can finish then people will marvel, wow, this guy is a wonderful guy. And so it calls upon us to stand firm and to continue standing firm. If you, if some students in the universities will go in and then they do not continue standing and following up the classes that they choose. You know, I was, I was listening to some parents, a place I was waiting for service, and the parent was telling another, there are two ladies, the, the, the one telling the other was telling of her son. They used to pay school fees, I think in Nairobi University. And they would send the school fees, and the young man would go and pay for his classes, but he would never attend class. The paying of the tuition was an attraction from the parents to get financial support. Because if he's not in classes, he would not be given financial support. But he never attended any class. So every time the money is paid, he pays and takes the receipt home to show that he has paid for his classes so that the parents can be sending money for his upkeep. But when the graduation came, he wasn't anywhere in the graduation list. And the parents just wondered, what was happening? What were you doing? This guy registered for the university, but he never stood firm to continue going to classes so that he can 
get his degree eventually. And so when we do not stand firm in whatever we have put before us, we, we, are, we never finish anything. We become losers. We become the talk of the village. Look at so and so. They started ABCD, but they have never finished. And so it is important that we continue standing firm in whatever we put our eyes on, our energies and our thinking on, we keep doing what is right and good for the glory of God. Jesus also told his disciples of the persecutions and also that nations will be fighting other nations. And to this day, this prophecy of Jesus Christ seems to be fulfilled. We have seen how nations are attacking other nations. So the United States and Britain attacking Iraq and destroying that nation. Then they attacked Gaddafi in Algeria, in Libya. Currently we have got Russia attacking Ukraine. We also have our neighbors here, the Ethiopians. They are fighting themselves. When we come closer home, we have got bandits that are killing their, uh, their, 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 their people. And so fighting, Jesus told his disciples, persecutions and nations fighting against nation. Then calamities that we have seen all over. Uh, and so Jesus was trying to help the disciples to keep firm in their faith. Because there will be many temptations and trials and things that can pull you away from your faith that will misdirect you so that you are no longer standing firm in your faith, you are not giving your testimony, you are not going to church. Thank God you, you have all chosen to come to church. And so we want to thank you for, uh, for that. And so we are called upon to stand firm, to continue standing firm in our faith so that we can be used of the Lord to exploit the resources that God has given us. As we continue living, there are so many forces around us that can, that can pull us from standing firm. It could be your neighbors. You never see eye to eye with your neighbors. There is something that happened. You have not been able to solve it. You have not been able to talk to each other. And so you don't want to see your neighbor. If they open their gate, you wait for them to go so that you can come out. Even in our homes, relationships between husbands and wives are falling apart. We are not keeping firm in our faith, in our relationships. And so things are falling apart. When Jesus Christ is the center of our lives and we do not attract Jesus Christ in our lives, even in our relationships, the center will never hold and things will fall apart. We have seen many things happening in our country, abductions, killings, and we want to thank the government that some of those uh, raw, uh, bad elements in the police are, are being dealt with so that people can live uh, in peace with each other. We've seen the way there is a lot of mugging around. And these are people who are not standing firm. They want to eat from other people. Paul, writing to the Thessalonians, is in the second book of Thessalonians, chapter 3 and verses 10, 
Paul is telling us, if you do not work, do not eat. Usikule kama hufanyi kazi. Usiwe kupe. Wakula ndamu ya wengine. You must work to eat. And so we, we have challenges even in our homes. There are members of the family who do not want to work. They are tempting our faith that even as we try to keep firm in our faith, we have these members in our families who are like what Paul said, a thorn in the flesh that keep pricking you as the parent or a relative. Because this person does not want to work. They want to eat. And if you don't give them food, you'll get hell in the house. So you give them food to have peace. They're, they're just a temptation. They're, they're just there to trouble and to bring discord in the family. And so you have to keep standing firm even in the midst of this trial that you cannot be able to escape because you cannot push this person away. I know some parents push some of the kids who do not want to work from their homes. They push them out. Go and be a man. Go and be a woman. Some of them have been affected by drugs and alcohol. And they are our relatives. These are like agents that have been sent to come and attack your faith. But Jesus is telling us, by keeping firm and standing firm in our faith, we shall gain life. Gaining life means you will succeed. You will succeed. You will gain life. You gain respect within the community because you have written your testimony. Paul reminds us and tells us that we are writings of testimonies, of our testimonies. We need to be seen to live our faith. Christianity is a lifestyle. Christianity is a lifestyle. And sometimes we make Christianity be seen like it's a joke. Because we who believe in Jesus Christ do not go by the faith that we, subs we subscribed to. We, on the way, fail to do that which is right. And so we are unable to keep on standing firm so that we can have life. We pray that God will help us. And remember the words of Joshua in Joshua chapter 24 and verses 15. When Joshua had preached to the children of Israel, the people of Israel, as they entered into Canaan, the promised land, he told them, choose who you are going to serve. Whether you are going to serve those other gods, or you are going to serve God, Jehovah, the one that we worship. And sure enough, you find some people who are Christians, and yet they have been influenced by things of this world. They believe in what we call the cause and effect. Cause and effect. You know, Christianity seems to tell us of things that are going to happen in the future. Not right now. And so we pray and sometimes our prayers are not answered. And so some people who are weak in their faith 
I'll persuade it to go out and consult oracles. And when they go to Mazingaumbwe, they are told all manner of funny things. Leta kukumweusi, leta chura, and all manner of things. And there, there is what we call in theological terms syncretism. Unachanganya ukristo na mambo ya ulimwengu. Because you are not standing firm in the faith that you accepted in the first place. And so we need to be aware of those things that can carry us away from the faith and trusting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. As parents, you have to keep firm or you have to keep standing firm when you are bringing up your children, fathers must be present fathers, not absentee fathers. Mothers must be there as well, so that your family will grow up as a good family that fears God. But if the father is absent and the mother is left alone to bring up the children, then the final product will be seen. And that will be a testimony of the kind of father that you are. God has called you to be a parent who keeps standing firm in parenting so that you can get the final product of the child that God has given you and bestowed to you to bring up. You will it will be a testimony. The final product of that child will be a testimony of what kind of a parent you have been. You have been. We'll see whether you have been standing firm in your faith, standing firm as a parent, standing firm as a present father and a present mother. May God help us that in everything that we attempt to do, and everything that God puts in our minds to do, may we do everything for the glory and honor of God, standing firm in faith so that we can eventually harvest the fruits of salvation when we keep standing firm. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.